What did Jesus really says part 4. 1.2.2.2 From the Quran's Standpoint Say, O Messenger, to the Christians who received the Gospel, do not overstep the limits in your religion and do not say anything but the truth about Allah in relation to Jesus. The Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, is only Allah's Messenger sent with the truth. He created him by his word which he sent with Gabriel to Mary, which was the word B, and he became. It was a breath from Allah which Gabriel blew with Allah's instruction. So have faith in Allah and all his messengers without making a distinction between them. Do not say, the gods are three. Avoid saying this false statement and it will be better for you in this world and the afterlife. Allah is the only one God free of any partner or child. He is self-sufficient. The dominion of the heavens, the earth and whatever is in between the two is his. He is sufficient as a guardian to carry out the affairs of his creation. The Quran, Al-Nisa 4, 171 if there were numerous gods in the heavens and the earth, they would have been ruined, due to the gods disputing in the kingdom. But the reality is not like this. So Allah, Lord of the throne, is pure of the lie the idolaters describe him with, namely that he has partners. The Quran, Al-Anbiya 21, 22 Think about it. If there were more than one god in existence, and one wanted you to do one thing and the other wanted you to do another then which one would have his way? If one wanted the sun to come out of the west and the other wanted it to come out of the east then which one would win? Verse such as Mark 14 36, and Matthew 26 39 clearly exhibit that God the Father and God the Son both have distinct wills. Further, we read. Allah gave the example of an idolater and a monotheist as that of a man owned by disputing partners, if he pleases some he angers others and he is thus confused and disturbed and of a man who is devoted to one man alone who owns him and whose intentions he knows, he is thus comfortable and calm. These two men are not the same. Praise be to Allah, but most of them do not know and therefore they ascribe others as partners to Allah. The Quran, Al-Zumar 39, 29 In other words, which would be more conducive of harmony, for an employee to have two bosses quarreling over him, or for each employee to have only one boss? Say, O Messenger, to these idolaters. If there were other deities along with Allah as they say as a fabrication and lie, then those supposed deities would have sought a way to Allah, the owner of the throne. To try to defeat and combat with him over his dominion. Allah, may he be glorified, is pure and sanctified from what the idolaters attribute to him and he is far above what they say. The heavens glorify Allah. The earth glorifies Allah. Every creation in the heavens and the earth also glorifies Allah. There is nothing except that it declares his purity together with his praise, but you do not comprehend their manner of glorifying him. This is because you only understand the glorification of those who do so in your language. He is forbearing, not quick to punish, and he is forgiving to those who repent to him. The Quran, Al-Isra 17, 42-44 Say, O Messenger, all praise is for Allah who deserves all types of praise and who is exalted from having a child or a partner, thus he has no partner in his kingdom. And he is not afflicted by disgrace or weakness, hence he has no need for anyone to help and support him. So exalt him abundantly, and do not attribute any child or partner to him nor any helper or supporter. The Quran, Al-Isra 17, 111 Allah has not taken a child as the disbelievers claim, nor is there any true deity alongside him. If there were to be any true deity alongside him, every deity would take his share of the creation he made and they would dominate one another, causing the order of the universe to become corrupt. The reality is that none of this has occurred, proving that the true deity is Allah alone. He is pure and holy of what the idolaters describe him with, namely partners and children which are unbefitting for him. He is knowing of everything hidden from his creation and knowing of everything which can be seen and perceived through the senses. None of this is hidden from him. Allah is above having a partner. al Mumanun 23, 91 to 92. Think of the mythology of the Romans and the Greeks and their countless gods. These gods were constantly at odds with each other and declaring war against each other and it was mankind that was always caught in the middle. 1.2.2.3 from a logical standpoint. If Jesus, peace be upon him, is part of a divine trinity which makes up the essence of God Almighty and Jesus died on the cross, then what happened to God Almighty? Remember, Christians such as Mr. J claim that they pray to one triune God and not three separate gods. Did the Trinity die? Did it continue to exist in a severely crippled form? If I am made up of heart, mind, and soul, and one of them dies, what happens to the rest of me? 
Are they one or three? If God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost are three names for the same being, definition of the Trinity required by Isaiah 43. 10 to 11 and many other verses, and not three separate gods, then the death of Jesus is just another way of saying the death of God the Father, which is also another way of saying the death of the Holy Ghost. Some members of the clergy will object that it was not Jesus per se who died, but rather it was his human form that died. His godly form was not affected. It is described as one describes someone removing his coat. This leaves us with a dilemma, because it leaves us with one of two cases. 1. Either Jesus himself died, in which case, since he is claimed to be part of the Trinity, and the Trinity is claimed to be one God, not three, required by Isaiah 43. 10 to 11 and many other verses, then God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost are all claimed to have died, since they are all the same essence. 2. Or, Jesus, peace be upon him, himself did not die, but only shed his earthly body, as it were, and in this case we must ask. Where then is the great sacrifice in this shedding of a useless shell? How is his shedding of this shell which is not his actual essence and ultimate sacrifice and atonement for all of mankind's sins? Can he not simply make 100 more human shells for himself to inhabit? Is his discarding of one of them an ultimate sacrifice? Continuing with our theme of logic. Remember when Jesus is alleged to have died, Luke 23 46, and when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. When people die they go to their Lord to be judged. If Jesus was, as claimed, a part of a trinity and the trinity is only one God, otherwise Christians would have to admit to worshipping multiple gods. Then Jesus was with God in a trinity before his death. It was only after his death that he was claimed to have left God and gone down into hell for three days. However, this verse tells us a completely different story. It claims that Jesus was somewhere other than already with God, otherwise it would not have to go to him, and was now going to God. Also read John 17:11. I come to thee, Holy Father, and John 17 13. And now come I to thee, etc. Sadly enough, most Christians are taught to brush off these matters with words like it is uncomprehendable, that is why it must be true, or believe blindly or you will lose your soul. Have we so soon forgotten for God is not the author of confusion 1 Corinthians 14 33? When Jesus, peace be upon him, allegedly died and went to hell for three days, 1 Corinthians 15 3 Christ died for our sins. Romans 5 6 Christ died for the ungodly etc. Did the Trinity die then reside in hell also, or was a third of the Trinity ripped away from the whole? Then tortured and killed while the remaining two-thirds, of God, remained in its crippled form outside a safe distance away. Who was overseeing the heavens and the earth while all of this was happening? A crippled Trinity? No one? If it is possible for one third of the Trinity to die independently of the other two then it becomes obvious that they are separate and independent and not one God, this contradicts Isaiah 43. 10 11. However, if they are indeed one God then the death of this one God contradicts many verses such as Jeremiah 10. 10 But the Lord is the true God, He is the living God, and an everlasting King. Also, if the giver of life is dead then who shall bring him back to life? God Almighty is claimed to have begotten Jesus, peace be upon him. He is claimed to be the father of Jesus. Naturally a father is present before he begets his son, no matter how you wish to define beget. Before Jesus was begotten, was the Trinity a duality? Was God complete? Explain Isaiah 43 10 to 11. If Jesus was begotten then he is not eternal. But the definition of the Trinity which was concocted in 325 AD when the Trinity was first defined requires the co-eternity of God and Jesus, see below. There are many such questions to be raised about this supposed Trinity which defy logic. When someone loves God with all thy mind and they prove all things, hold fast that which is good are they not presented with countless contradictions regarding the Trinity. We are speaking about the logic of Jesus, peace be upon him, here in not blind faith. Jesus is beseeching us to use our minds but we would rather follow others who demand blind faith. Jesus tells us that if a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him, and make our abode with him. John 14 23 Sadly, the same people who love him dearly have now been taught that in order to love Jesus they must completely disregard everything he ever taught his followers and must follow others who are better able. 
to explain his message than himself. In effect, his words have been totally abandoned, see below. If the Trinity designates God as being three separate entities, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, and if God is the Father and also the Son, he would then be the Father of himself because he is his own Son. This is not exactly logical, please read chapter 1.2.8. Jesus, peace be upon him, claims to not even know when that day is but of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father Mark 13. 32. Is he not part of God? Is the Trinity not one God? The fact that one of them has knowledge not available to the other two-thirds is a clear indication that they are distinct and separate beings, and not three faces of one being. If I have three balls of clay and I press them together into one ball then they become one but now it is impossible to retrieve the original three exactly as they were originally. If I have three bricks and I stack them above each other then I can separate them, but I cannot call the three bricks one brick. If I have a cup of water which can become steam, water, or ice, then it is not possible for me to drink the water form while the ice and steam forms remain inside the glass. It is not possible for the water form to beseech the ice form to save it from being drunk while the ice form stayed a safe distance away. This is simple logic. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God, with all thy mind. This is the first commandment Mark 12:30. For the historical details of how such a doctrine was developed in the first place, please read chapter 1.2.5 which is coming up soon. But first, 1.2.3, The Son of God and for him alone is the kingdom of the heavens and the kingdom of earth. And the angels with him neither scorn worshipping him nor do they tire of it. They constantly glorify him without tiring of it. But the idolaters took gods besides all which cannot revive the dead, so how do they worship something unable to do this? If there were numerous gods in the heavens and the earth, they would have been ruined, due to the gods disputing in the kingdom. But the reality is not like this. So Allah, Lord of the throne, is pure of the lie the idolaters describe him with, namely that he has partners. And Allah is alone in his kingdom and decree. Nobody can ask him what he has decreed and ordered, whilst he will ask his servants about their actions and will reward them accordingly. But they took other gods besides Allah. Say, O Messenger, to these idolaters, bring your proof for their being worthy of worship. This book which has been revealed to me and the books revealed upon the messengers contain no proof for you. But rather most of the idolaters only take support from ignorance and blind following, so they turn away from accepting the truth. And I have not sent before you, O messenger, any messenger except that I revealed to him that there is no true God except me, so worship me alone and do not associate any partner with me. The idolater said, Allah has taken the angels as daughters. Pure and exalted is Allah from the line they say. The angels are in fact the servants of Allah, honored by him and close to him. They do not proceed before their Lord in any sane, so they do not speak until he orders them, and they act according to his command and do not oppose any command of his. He knows their previous and latter actions. They do not ask to intercede except with his permission and on behalf of whom he approves intercession. And they are wary out of their fear of him, so they do not oppose him in any command or prohibition. And for argument's sake. Whoever amongst the angels were to say, I am a god besides Allah, I will punish him for what he says with hellfire on the day of judgment, staying therein forever. And with this kind of punishment I punish those who are unjust by disbelieving and associating partners with Allah. The Quran, al anbiya 21, 19-29 Remember, O Messenger, when the angels said, O Mary, Allah gives you good news of a child who will be created without a father. Merely by a word from Allah such as be, and he will become a child by Allah's will. The name of this child will be the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary. He will have a high rank in this world and the afterlife and he will be one of those who are made close to Allah. The Quran, Ali Imran 3, 45 We do not differ with Christians in the fact that Jesus, peace be upon him, was indeed born miraculously without a human father. Muslims only differ with Christians in the Christians claim that Jesus must have a father. Trinitarians believe that if he has no human father then his father must be God. Muslims believe that he had no father whatsoever, and this was the essence of his miraculous birth. With Allah, the example of the creation of Jesus, peace be upon him, is like the creation of Adam, who was born from dust without a father or a mother. Allah simply said to him, Become a man. And he became as Allah willed. 
How do you then assume that Jesus is a God on the basis that he has no father when new except that Adam is human despite his having no father or mother? The Quran, Ali Imran 3, 59 Some of the idolaters said, Allah has taken the angels as daughters. Allah is free of their statement. He, may he be glorified, is self-sufficient and is not in need of any of his creation. The control of whatever is in the heavens and the earth is his. You, O oh idolaters, do not have any proof for this statement of yours. Are you saying such a serious statement about Allah, by attributing a child to him, even though you do not know the reality of this and you have no proof? The Quran, Yunus 10, 68 The Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, was only a messenger like other messengers. Just as death occurs to other messengers, it will occur to him as well. His mother, Mary, was a truthful and sincere woman. Both of them were in need of and used to consume food. How can they be gods when they were in need of food? Look, O messenger, and think about how I make clear to them the signs indicating my oneness and the falsehood of their extremism in attributing lordship to others besides me. Despite this, they do not recognize as these signs. Then look and think about how they are misled from the truth, despite these clear signs indicating my oneness. The Quran, al maida 5, 75 And this is life eternal, that they might know you the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. The Bible, John 17 3. Notice the above words of the Bible, you the only true God. Most Christians always manage to see a hidden abstract meaning for the verses of the Bible. Even when they read the above verse they always manage to understand something totally different than that which they are reading. They always interpret the word you to be we, and thus, understand the above verse to say we the only true God. Jesus, peace be upon him, is obviously talking to a distinctly different entity than himself and telling that entity that he alone is the only true God. Is Jesus, PBUH, incapable of saying I the only true God or we the only true God if that is what he meant? Can we see the difference? With regard to your second comment, we are not implying anything. The Quran clearly states in no uncertain terms that God created Jesus. Let us quote from the unbiased Webster's Dictionary as to what is implied by the word begotten. To procreate as the father, sire, to produce as an effect or an outgrowth. Muslims feel such claims with regard to God Almighty are an abomination. Muslims are not the only ones who believe that Jesus, peace be upon him, is mortal and not a God. The Jews also believe this, in addition to the very first groups of Christianity such as the Ebonites, the Serinthians, the Basilidians, the Capocratians, and the Hypocisterians. The Arians, Paulicians and Goths also accepted Jesus as a prophet of God. Even in the modern age there are churches in Asia, in Africa, the Unitarian Church, the Jehovah's Witnesses, and even the majority of today's Anglican bishops do not worship Jesus as God. The Church, as Heinz Arndt put it put words into the mouth of Jesus which he never spoke and attributed actions to him which he never performed. One of those who has shown that most of what the Church says about Jesus is baseless is Rudolf Augustine in his book Jesus the Son of Man. Another very comprehensive study of this matter can be found in the book The Myth of God Incarnate which was written by seven theologian scholars in England in 1977 and edited by John Hick. Their conclusion in this matter is that Jesus was a man approved by God, for a special role within the divine purpose. And, the later conception of him as God Incarnate, is a mythological or poetic way of expressing his significance for us. See also John McKean and Robertson's Christianity and Mythology. T.W. Doan's The Bible Myths and Their Parallels in Other Religions, a good summary of these studies is available in M.F. Anzare, Islam and Christianity in the Modern World. A University of Richmond Professor, Dr. Robert Alley After considerable research into newly found ancient documents concludes that The, biblical, passages where Jesus talks about the sons of God are later additions, what the Church said about him. Such a claim of deity for himself would not have been consistent with his entire lifestyle as we can reconstruct. For the first three decades after Jesus' death Christianity continued as a sect within Judaism. The first three decades of the existence of the church were within the synagogue. That would have been beyond belief if they, the followers, had boldly proclaimed the deity of Jesus. Know therefore this day, and consider it in thine heart, that the Lord he is God in heaven above, and upon the earth beneath, there is none else Deuteronomy 439.
For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it, he created it not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited, I am the Lord. And there is none else Isaiah 45 18. Thus saith the Lord the King of Israel, and his Redeemer the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God Isaiah 44 6. That they may know from the rising of the sun, and from the west, that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. Isaiah 45 6. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me, and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior Isaiah 43 10-11. If there was no God formed before or after God Almighty, then how was Jesus, peace be upon him, begotten as a God? The answer is, he was not. He was a mortal man, not a God. Many people will now complain but the Bible clearly says that Jesus is the Son of God. Well then, how many sons does God Almighty have? The Bible tells us that Jacob is God's son and firstborn, Israel is my son, even my firstborn Exodus 4:22. Solomon is God's son he shall build an house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son, 2 Samuel 7 13-14. Ephraim is God's firstborn, for I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Jeremiah 31 9, who is God's firstborn? Israel or Ephraim? Adam is the son of God Adam, which was the son of God. Luke 3 38. Even common people are the sons of God, ye are the children of the Lord your God Deuteronomy 14 1. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God Romans 8 14. Well then, is Jesus the only begotten Son of God? Read Psalms 2 7 I will declare the decree, the Lord hath said unto me, David the King, thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. When the Jews picked up stones to stone Jesus, peace be upon him, he defended himself with the words of John 10:34. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, Ye are gods? If he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, referring to Psalms 82 6 I have said, Ye are gods. And all of you are children of the Most High, as we can see from these and many other verses like them. Son of God in the language of the Jews was a very innocent term used to describe a loyal servant of God. Grolier's Encyclopedia, under the heading Jesus Christ, says, During his earthly life Jesus was addressed as rabbi and was regarded as a prophet. Some of his words, too, place him in the category of sage. A title of respect for a rabbi would be my lord. Already before Easter his followers, impressed by his authority, would mean something more than usual when they addressed him as my lord. It is unlikely that the title Sons of David was ascribed to him or accepted by him during his earthly ministry. Son of God, in former times a title of the Hebrew kings, Psalms 2-7, was first adopted in the post-Easter church as an equivalent of Messiah and had no metaphysical connotations, Romans 1-4. Jesus was conscious of a unique filial relationship with God, but it is uncertain whether the father-son language, Mark 18-32, Matt. 11 25-27 par. John Passam, goes back to Jesus himself. There seems to be only two places in the Bible where Jesus, peace be upon him, refers to himself as Son of God. They are in John chapter 5 and 11. Hastings in the Dictionary of the Bible says, whether Jesus used it of himself is doubtful. Regardless, we have already seen what is meant by this innocent title. However, Jesus is referred to as the Son of Man, literally, human being, 81 times in the books of the Bible. In the Gospel of Barnabas, we are told that Jesus, PBUH, knew that mankind would make him a god after his departure and severely cautioned his followers from having anything to do with such people. Even in the New Testament we find him calling himself human being, son of man, over and over again. What was he trying to tell us by constantly repeating and emphasizing to us in the New Testament I am a human being, I am a human being, I am a human being? Think about it. Do Christians emphasize this aspect of Jesus? The New Testament Greek word used for son are pias and pida which means servant. Or son in the sense of servant. These are translated to son in reference to Jesus and servant in reference to others in some translations of the Bible, see below. Muslims are told that Jesus, peace be upon him, was a human being, not a god. 
they are told that Jesus continually emphasized this to his followers throughout his mission. The Gospel of Barnabas also affirms this fact. Once again, Grolier's Encyclopedia says, Most problematical of all is the title Son of Man. This is the only title used repeatedly by Jesus as a self-designation. And there is no clear evidence that it was used as a title of majesty by the post-Easter Church. Hence it is held by many to be authentic, since it passes the criterion of dissimilarity, emphasis added. Is Jesus, peace be upon him, a divine Son of God because God is his Father? Let us read Matthew 5.45 that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. And Matthew 5.48, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect, etc. There are countless verses in the Bible to this effect. To understand what is meant by the reference to Father we need only read John 8.42, Jesus said unto them, If God were your Father, ye would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. So the love of God and his prophets is what makes God someone's Father. Similarly, John 8.44 Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. Obviously neither the devil nor God is the physical father of any of them. Well then, is Jesus the son of God because he raised the dead? If so, then what about Ezekiel who raised many more dead bodies than Jesus ever did? Ezekiel raised the whole city from the dead, Ezekiel 37 1-9. If we are looking for godly powers and miracles as proof of godliness then what about Joshua who stopped the sun and moon for one whole day, Joshua 10:12 12-13. Can anyone but God Almighty do this? Elisha raised the dead, resurrected himself, healed a leper, fed a hundred people with twenty barley loaves and a few ears of corn, and healed a blind man, 2 Kings 4:35, 4, 13:21, 5, 14:444, and 6:11. Elijah raised the dead, and made a bowl of flour and a jar of oil inexhaustible for many days, 1 Kings 17:22 and 14. To say nothing of Moses, peace be upon him, and his countless miracles. Of his parting of the sea, of his changing of a stick into a serpent, of his changing of water into blood, etc. And so forth. 